a number after the decimal point. Well, this is perfect. Now I can take this fill handle and apply it to all the other students, and now I have their percent. Okay, this is perfect. I, I have all the information I want. I now want to be able to make this look nice in terms of when I print it out on a sheet of paper. See, what I can do is I can click on this drop down right here. This is called the Customize Quick Access Toolbar. If I click this thing, I can have a print preview and print option. So I'll click this, and there it is. There's my print preview option. So I'll click over here, and this is what it looks like. Well, I don't like this. It, it looks like I'm going to get confused as I read from this line all the way forward. I could accidentally read this as 72 when Robert really deserved an 80. So I don't like this. I think I need to go back over here. So I'm going to go over here to the Home tab, and I'm going to add some lines or some borders around the data that I have. By the way, you'll see these dashed lines. Since you entered into the print preview mode, these lines right here represent page breaks. So this is the right-hand side of the page. So it's indicating that there's a little bit of space. OK, so let's do this. Let's click Hold Down A1 and go all the way to H6. Let go. So you have selected a range of cells. The range of cells is from A1 to H6. Well, with this range of cells, I want to place a border around each of those cells. In the font group, you'll notice this button over here. It's the borders button. So I'm going to click the drop down, and you'll see all of the different options that I have for borders. Well, in this case, I want you to click all borders. So when you click all borders, notice how it places a border in everything. Now, you get these little gray lines right here, but those are non-printable guidelines. These borders right here are printable. And I'll prove it to you. All we have to do is simply click Print Preview and Print, and now you can see what it looks like. Okay, so let me go ahead and go back to the Home tab. I like what this looks like. So far, so good. Um, but maybe we should have that top row, black background, white font, and bold, perhaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select A1 all the way to H1. Let go. Now I'm going to use these two buttons over here. This one over here is responsible for the fill color. This one here is responsible for the font color. So if I click this drop down, I'm going to select the black paint chip. So let me see here. Does the word black come up? Yep. So I'll click that. That's a black background. Now I can't see the words behind it because it's also a black font. So I better change the font for the selection. And I'll just simply click this drop down for the font color. And let's say that I want the white paint chip. So I'll click that. Very nice. That looks good. I think what would look even better is if I made this thing bold. So I'll click bold. Okay, that looks pretty nice. All right, another thing I'm noticing is that these columns may be a little bit too large. Uh, notice how much space I have over here between B and C, C and D, column one. Look at all that space over there. By the way, all numbers are always going to be right justified. Text is going to be left justified. So let me show you how you can change the size of a column. You just simply drag the intersection. I'm going to move my mouse in between B and C right here. I'm going to click, hold down, and drag this. And it gives you the number of pixels. And remember, 72 pixels is approximately equal to 1 inch. This guy over here is telling you the character width. So in other words, it's saying approximately 22 characters. Let me Right here, there we go. Approximately 22 characters can fit in this width. All right, I never use those. You know what I do? I just simply take this, I double click, double click. See that? Double click. I double click in between the intersection of the letters of the columns. And what it does is it's called best fit. It reduces the size of the column based on the best fit. See, when I double click in between B and uh, A and B, rather, um, it's going to reduce this to the size so that I can see all the students. Watch this. What if I had a crazy name? Like, um, Let's say that I had a you know a crazy long name like that. Uh, let me get rid of the last four characters. Press Enter. Okay. Now if I double click in between A and B, notice how again it reduces the size, but it's a little bit longer or it's a little bit larger in terms of the width of the column to accommodate that long first name. Let me go ahead and double click over here. In fact, let me double click again so I can select all the text. I'll just press Delete, and then I'll type Robert. Press Enter. Now I can double click here to best fit. Ah, that's much better. So best fitting is a very nice feature. Uh, let me go ahead and make these very large. So I'm going to change these column widths. I'm just simply dragging and dropping them. 
And I'm going to do the same thing for the rows. By the way, double clicking on the rows also is best uh, fitting the row height. So this is way too big, obviously. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have you click the Select All button. That's this guy right here. So the button on the upper left hand corner uh, to the left of A above number one, if you click that, it's going to select every single row, every single column. I will double click here. I will double click here. And now notice that I have just best fit every single row, every single column. This is great because now I have a quick way of making sure that the uh, that the Excel spreadsheet looks as small as possible and as concise and neat as possible. Okay, I think the last thing that I want to do is I want the sum and the percent to stand out. And the way that I'm going to do that is as follows. I'll select from G2 to G6. I want to change that background color, but I just want it to be a slight background color. I don't want it to be so dark as the black is, say for example. So what I'll do is I'll click again on the fill color and I'll select one of these lighter colors like what is this one right here? This one says blue accent one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll do the same thing for percent. I'll select these cells. I'll click on this drop down for the background color and let's see what this orange one looks like. Yeah, that looks much better. So it's just it's not so loud and obnoxious. It's just a slight color to give you or give the user an idea an ID that this is the sum column and this is also the percent column it stands out okay so let's take a look at the print preview and um, oh, we're looking much better this looks more concise very difficult to to confuse this I'm gonna click the home tab this really shouldn't be sheet one let me double click this ah so when I double click I can rename and so this is my grade sheet enter so this is my grade sheet or maybe I want to double click and say no this is not my grade sheet this is a uh, grades for uh, fall 2012 enter so double clicking this allows you to change the the wording or change uh, the title for this particular tab another thing to do is to right click and then to select rename it's the same thing as double clicking okay let me select this guy over here go back over here to grades uh, fall 2012 I can right click this thing and I can change the color so I want to make this thing red click red and now if I select another sheet tab notice that this is red if I select it it turns into a gradient okay so that looks pretty nice as well um, what if I wanted to make a copy and paste of this and uh, work on my spring 2012 grades well I can right click this I can move or copy and then I can say I want to make I want to create a copy of this and I want to click OK so notice what happens it creates a copy it puts the parentheses two over here now I can double click and I can get rid of this text and then I'm gonna type spring okay so this is grades spring 2012 I can press enter and now the change is uh, in effect okay so I have these two tabs which basically show like, the exact same data all right, let's go ahead and save the data. So we'll click File and then Save As. And then where are we going to save this as? Well, it's always going to save it to the Documents folder. And I can call this whatever I want. So I'll just say this is called my Excel uh, Lab 01 uh, Workbook. And then I'll click Save. And there we go. So uh, Excel Lab 01 Workbook. Now you have this item saved, you can close Microsoft Excel. So this is a very simple, general introduction to Microsoft Excel. I'll provide additional video lessons to give you even more detail of how to use Microsoft Excel. All right, so this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.